So in the last video, I mentioned the idea of debugging an operating system. So suppose you have your operating system and you've gone through and you've done a make and you run the operating system and you get a problem like this. So the operating system is clearly not booting. It loops back into the grub bootloader and nothing really happens. How do you actually go about debugging these kind of problems? That's what we're going to address in this video. So the first thing that you're going to do is inside of your make file, you want to compile your C code using the hyphen G flag. What this is going to do is it's going to add debugging information into each of the resulting object files. That way, when we actually do this make, we'll have a debuggable binary that we can work with. So at this point, we need to be able to debug our kernel. The way that we do that is we're going to run QMU with two different flags a lowercase hyphen s and an uppercase hyphen s. What this will do is it will stop QMU at the very start of it executing. And what this is allowing us to do is it's allowing us to connect a debugger up to QMU so we can actually step through the process of our uh, ISO loading. So to connect a debugger, I'll just come over to my other screen here. And I'm gonna run the following command, gdb. And I'm gonna to point to the kernel binary file which is located in jazz boot kernel. This is the file that results from the linker, this LD command. We want this particular file here. So that's what we're looking for. So mine is located at jazz slash boot slash kernel. When I do this, it will place me inside of GDB. Now I need to connect GDB to QMU. The way that I do this is using the following command. I say target remote one, two, three, four. What this is gonna do is it's gonna to connect to QMU remotely. So it's actually gonna connect us up to it. And now we have our code synced up with QMU and we're able to step through and debug our code. If I type L, it will show me the C code of where we're currently at. And what I could do is I can add in breakpoints. So in this case, the error that I have, it's inside of init GDT. So I'm gonna create a breakpoint in that function. So I'll just say break init GDT. Then I'm gonna say continue. What will happen is execution will continue. Now that GDT code doesn't trigger until I actually select the operating system in Grub. So once I select it, you'll see that we hit the breakpoint. And at this point, I'm gonna change my layout to ASM. It's helpful to be able to read the assembly code, of course, so that we can see the actual code going through. And at this point, we're inside of that function. So I can actually step through and I can go into the code and see all of the different things that are associated here. So you can see here that we have like the set GDT gate. This is a call to the you know function to set the GDT gate to actually get things initialized. And what we could do is if we want to just like break outside of that function so that we can continue past it, we could do something like this, like break um, 100, actually I think you have to go like 0x, 100, 38c. And then we could continue on, oh, actually we want to break just right after it. So 0x, 100, 391, we would say. And then we could just say continue. Right, that would let us skip over it. I think that there's also ways to like just like step over as well. So we could do something like that if we wanted to, you know, skip over each of these calls. Um, so that would be something that we could do in these processes as well. And generally what I like to do is I like to just add breakpoints at different intervals inside of my code and just kind of continue through and just keep on continuing until I reach some sort of error. And you'll see what that looks like as we continue on here. It's actually gonna be very clear that we've encountered you know, some sort of error. So we're just gonna continue on through our code, you know, just continue breaking through. And eventually we're gonna hit the point where we actually try to set the GDT tables in memory. And that's where we're gonna see the actual problem that's associated with our error. So as we continue on, we've got one more gate to set, I think, and then we're done. So we'll just break at there and then continue and then step by, there we go. Now we're at GDT flush. So when I go into this function here, you'll see where the actual problem is. So we move the, uh, the address of the GDT table. We then do the LGDT to load that GDT table. And watch what happens here. When I move into EAX, then I hit this moving EAX into DS, moving EAX into ES, FS, GS, SS, and then we jump back into our code. And you'll see that when we do that jump, actually everything seems to go wrong, right? Do you see how we get into like this question mark area? We no longer know where we are. We've jumped somewhere weird. And if I were to continue my QMU from here, it's gonna take me back to the grub bootloader. 
So at this point, we know that when we're actually doing that jump or you know those last few instructions inside of that code, we're actually encountering an error. Now from here, you just have to have a bit of understanding about how these registers work, right? So these registers, when they are actually set, all of these different registers, they are set based on the actual like uh, GDT reference, right? So if the GDT reference is incorrect or if there's something wrong with the GDT reference, these will actually fail to verify, which will result in an exception or fault in our application. That can cause the crash that we're seeing in our application. So what that indicates to me is that if I have a failure inside of this code here, it's telling me that I am you know, trying to parse an incorrect GDT record. So generally my GDT record looks to be incorrect. I'm not moving to the right locations. And that is true because I've actually flipped around my GDT record here. So I actually moved around some of my different GDT records here, and that's what's causing this error. So do you see how we can pretty easily step through and debug our code using this type of process? So I could fix my error and I can run again. And generally if I wanna run again, I would probably just remove those S flags that I don't you know, stop the, uh, the execution. And now you can see that everything is working as expected. So I just wanted to take that brief little break just to show you how we can debug things using GDP, as it's gonna be just like a very helpful tool for you as you continue through your process of learning low-level programming and operating system development. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next video.